All right, guys, welcome back to the channel today. And we had a really satisfying episode of the Eminence in Shadow today. You know, Zenin broke the golden rule of anime, guys. If you're going to brag and talk shit, you will get hit hard. Way harder than you're hitting because Sid just absolutely demolished him. It was kind of wild. Major overkill, by the way. Major overkill. Yo, we just lost the south side of the city over here, but hey, we took out this guy, right? <laughs> but very fun nonetheless. And we even got some character development for Alexia today. And I gotta say, I don't think she'll be out of the series. I don't think they'll just dump her and just move on, you know? I feel like she'll be a reoccurring character as we progress through the show. But who knows? I could be wrong, especially with how the episode ended today. I could be very wrong. Like, nah, we're getting rid of her. We're moving on to the next. But enough talking about that. Let's get right into it and talk about the Eminence in Shadow episode five today. So our episode begins today with Sid literally just running up on Zenin, basically strutting up to him like, yo, am I looking cool right now, man? Like, am I giving off that badass energy right now? Like, <laughs> As Zenin looks at him and says, Ah, you're the stray dog that's been snapping at the cult lately. You seem to have gotten a swelled head after crushing a few of our similar or smaller facilities. But not one of the cult's core members was anywhere near any of those bases. You're just a bunch of cowards going after our weakest minions. Since so just looking at him like, You done talking? Because whomever or whenever we hunt, the result is the same. Zenin's like, nah, -uh, no, it's not. You're lying. <laughs> a core member of the cult is right here. Today, you will be hunted by me, the future 12th seat of rounds, Zenin Griffey. Yo, what a last name. I will take your life in the service of the knights' as rounds. And I really like how Sid's just standing here like, yo, what are you going to do? Like, what, what are you actually going to do, though? Like, stop talking. Come at me as Zenin charges at him. Because he just hits air afterwards. Because Sid's over by Alexi now. And he's like, so, where is this core member of the cult? And again, in this scene, I got a preference that she's got to know who he is, right? Like, ah, there's no way she doesn't understand who he is right now. He's so close, she should be able to make out who he is. She spent enough time with him. But we'll have to come back to that question another time because we transition to the city just getting absolutely rocked right now because the creature is just running through the city and everyone is panicked. Not only do they have to deal with Shadow Garden right now, they got this creature going through the city right now. So everyone is up in arms. These knights are really trying to do something against this creature, but it ain't doing nothing because it can regenerate and heal itself. But it's here we see Alexia's sister Iris come onto the scene and she kind of puts in a little work as she's surveying the damages and the casualties as she jumps up and attacks the creature and lands a pretty clean slice into its shoulder, honestly. Kind of looking like a bleach injury over here. <laughs> but just like previous times, the creature ends up healing its wound as the creature charges her again and she actually cuts its entire arm off right here. And literally sends the creature flying into the wall, too. And I gotta admit, she's looking kind of badass right here. Can't lie about that. But yet again, the creature regenerates itself, and we're right back at square one. So she says, in that case, I'll just have to cut you into pieces so small that you can't regenerate from them. As she just starts laying waste to the creature, just brutally hacking into her. But it's here, all of a sudden, we just hear, you're only making her suffer. Can't you see that? As Alpha shows up. The creature tries to swing on Alpha, but misses, and she's not there. Psych, just kidding, she's above her, coming straight down. As she says, you poor thing, I know it hurts. You don't have to suffer anymore. You don't have to feel pain anymore. As she brings down this massive amount of energy on, on top of the creature. It's honestly a pretty cool scene, because Iris is just looking on like, yo, I can't do that. <laughs> I can't do that. I thought I was supposed to be the strongest here. I'm actually, what, like, 10th? <laughs> but instead of evaporating, we see that the creature turns into a, a girl. 
or should I say turns into her true form again as Alpha looks down and we see that locket from our previous episode and it gets revealed that it's that guy's daughter that he was talking about that he was trying to save and it makes sense that the experiment's a person like I kind of I kind of had an inkling of that because the second that Alexia was put in that one uh prison the creature was looking over at her and it and it kind of felt like there was sympathy there between each other. Like they were kind of understanding because they are in similar positions. That's what it felt like to me. As Alpha tries to leave and Iris is like, wait, no, you're not going anywhere. And Alpha's got to tell her like, be a good audience member and content yourself with sitting back and enjoying the show. Just having the sun her real quick. We are Shadow Garden and you will stay out of our way. As she does a Batman and disappears into the smoke. And it's here we transition back to Sid and Zenon fighting as Zenon says, I see, apparently I've underestimated you a little. I can see how you've managed to destroy so many of our bases. Now let me show you. Behold the power of a future night of rounds as Zenon's like doing some DV, DBZ kind of shit right now and charging up. And I just think it's so funny that Zenon is literally here powering up like a DBZ character. And Sid just makes him lose his concentration, walks behind him, and just smacks him into the water. Like, yo, he's sunning the shit out of him. As he literally just looks down on him and says, you're not attacking future rounds. Zenon's a little heated by this as it literally turns into a DBZ fight that they're just swinging so fast we can't see it. They're destroying the environment around them with the shockwaves of their swords. <laughs> Jokes aside, it's a pretty cool scene, I gotta admit. And as Alexia's just looking on this scene, she says to herself that his technique has gone beyond excellent and into the realms of transcendent. But at its core... His fencing is so ordinary. And again, dude, she's got to know. She's got to know at this point. There's no way. That'd be the dumbest thing ever if she doesn't know. I'll be honest about that. As she says, my ridiculous idea of ideal swordplay, even without the innate talent for the sword that my sister had, I believe that if I worked long and hard enough, I could be as strong as she is. But no matter how hard I tried, I could never catch up to the prodigy. The best I could ever do was get people to compare me to her and laugh at me. The fencing style of the have-nots with no strength and no skill. The fencing style of the fencer ordinaire. But she couldn't give it up. This style that's nothing but a plain, boring accumulation of basic skills. As I believe she finally comes to understand the true meaning of what her sister told her that day. And I like Alexia in this scene because I can get behind a character that gets laughed at and ridiculed but still keeps working hard and trying to keep doing the best that they can. I can respect a character that will do that no matter what. As we transition back to Sid and Zenon's fight, and Sid's demolishing him, he lands a clean slash across Zenon's chest. And Zenon's looking a little shook as he says, Who are you? If you have so much power, why do you hide your identity? Because, sir, I'm the most extra man in the world. <laughs> Jokes aside, we are Shadow Garden. They who lurk in the shadows, who hunt the shadows. That is the sole purpose of our existence. Zenon tells him, are you insane? Uh, a little bit, yeah, kinda, sorta. But then Zenon's like, all right, if you really want to fight, and I'll give you a fight as we see that he pulls out those pills from our previous episode. And he says, with these pills, a man can awaken to a new nature beyond human limitations. If an ordinary person took them, he would be overwhelmed by their tremendous power and die. As Zenon just downs the whole bottle and he's really looking like a DBZ character now. Come on, spiky hair, black lightning. Come on now, as he says, I am the third awakened. This is only my third form. He says, those who can control this power are the real chosen ones. He's like, let me show you almighty power as he charges at Sid. As we see that Sid just looks disappointed as he says, how unsightly. If that's the best you can do, don't you dare claim to be almighty. That's blasphemy against the almighty. 
as he dispels his attack and literally just starts throwing hands right here like, yo, fuck the sword. I don't need the sword. I'm just going to beat your ass. <laughs> literally kicks him in the face and says, there is no road to almightiness for those using borrowed strength. And that's true, to be fair. As he smashes the bottle and we just see this dope scene of, of him enacting a barrier around them as he says, playtime is over. As Zenin remembers that he's an anime character as he says, what? Impossible! A single person could never! As Sid interrupts him with story time saying, once upon a time, there was a man who wished to withstand a nuclear bomb. The man developed his muscles, honed his mind, perfected his skills. However, there were yet heights he could not obtain, but I couldn't allow myself to give up. So after years upon years of training, I arrived at a single solution. If I don't want to be vaporized in a nuclear explosion, I simply have to become nuclear myself. As Zenin tries to attack him, but his sword literally shatters against like Sid's arm. And he just raises his sword up and says, let the true meaning of Almighty be carved into your soul. This is my Almighty power. As we just hear, I am atomic. As everything just goes white. And I'm thinking to myself, like, should you really be doing that under the city? But then we see a shot of the city and I'm like, oh, the city's fine. We're good. And then it completely comes out the ground and destroys everything. Like, yo, bye, South Side. It's been real. You're just off the face of the map now. <laughs> and I just find it so funny that everyone in the capital is probably like, yo, this is horrible. What's happening? So many people died. And then all the members of Shadow Garden are just sitting around looking like, ah, look, that's our boss. All right. Yeah. He must have been feeling himself today. <laughs> Even Iris is looking on like, yo, what can I do against that? I can't do anything against that. As the blast dissipates and we just see this gigantic crater right there with Alexia just standing right in the center of it. And again, I gotta say, my, might be a little bit overkill. Just saying. And instead of being freaked out in this situation, she actually picks up the sword and probably thinks to herself like, yo, I kind of want to do that too. And starts practicing right there. <laughs> but no, in all, in all seriousness though, she probably picks up the sword and starts practicing because she finally feels like she can accept her style for what it is. You know, she's finally come to love her own style. And that's probably why she does that. But it's here as she's doing that, that Iris actually finds her and then runs up and embraces her. And it's here that Alexia actually hugs her back. And we get a nice little scene of them rekindling their sisterly relationship with each other. It, it's kind of nice, you know? I'm not so cold hearted. It's kind of nice. As she tells her, thank you. And it's here we transition back to the school where Alexia is talking to Sid as she says that it appears there's more to the plot than meets the eye. But as far as the public is concerned, the case has been solved. As Sid's just sitting there like, wow, that's so cool. Wow. Remember, guys, we got to be background character A again. <laughs> as he's like, yo, all right, I guess I'm done here. I'm, I'm leaving. But right before she go or he goes, she stops him and says, you told me you liked my fencing style, remember? Maybe it's a little late to say this, but thank you. Sid's just like, you're, you're welcome, I guess. As she says that I finally learned to like my sword style. Not because of you though. And I'm sitting here like, yo, what is this atmosphere we're setting up here? Like, what, what are we about to do here? So it's just like, I think you could have left that last part out, you know? A little, a little rude. She's like, well, it's true though. And Sid's like, okay, well, I'm, I'm out of here now. I'll see you later. But she stops him again and says, we've been pretending to be a couple for a while now. And during the incident, Zenin kindly got himself killed. He kind of got blown to smithereens. So if you're interested, 
I was thinking maybe we could keep this relationship going a little longer. And I'm sitting here like, all right, let's do it. You're going to be, what, number 130 or something in my harem? Let's do it. Join the squad. Let's go. <laughs> Just number 130 coming up. But this man, Sid, is literally like, eh, I'm going to have to say no to that. <laughs> and she's looking at him like, oh, you... And then we just see a huge blood splatter. <laughs> As he says, later, massive amounts of blood were discovered behind the school building. But no body was found in the vicinity. This incident would eventually go on to become one of the school's seven mysteries. The bodiless murder. And it's here we transition to Alpha and the rest of Shadow Garden holding a meeting with each other. As she says that Zeta has reported in that she's found the next target. But a more pressing issue is the fact that it looks like the cult is impersonating Shadow Garden and trying to run a smear campaign against them, basically. Trying to make them look like they've done things that they haven't done. As they say, they're fools to call themselves by our name. Although they do seem to be covering their tracks rather well. And it's here we transition to Iris, who's going over everything that's happened, as she says, Our knights, our kingdom's most renowned sword instructor was an adherent to the cult of Diablos. Considering that fact, I will put together a new investigation team. As she says, right now, this is our only clue, as it appears that she has this, I don't even know what to call it, like, not a medallion, just this one item inside of this box. As we transition to another girl who is apparently reading up on this item inside of a book. And who should this lucky lady run into but our boy Sid, who is literally walking away from that incident with Alexia saying, that girl is definitely not a princess. She's a natural born killing machine. As him and this girl bump into each other in typical anime fashion and you gotta be blind not to... Not to see someone walk in there. Like, that's such a big trope in anime. As she literally looks up at this man who's drenched in blood. As he says, are you okay? And she's looking a little hot and bothered in this situation. And our episode ends like this is a shoujo anime. Like, what? Like, this, this show, man. <laughs> we literally like, all right, we're done with Alexia. Time to move on to the next girl. <laughs> Like, why not, right? But this show is so fun. Zenin finally got his shit pushed in, which was very entertaining to watch. And Sid really just destroyed a huge portion of the city, huh? Like, tis a small thing when you are the eminence in shadow. Tis a small thing that I've done. <laughs> like, uh, uh, South Side's gone, but hey, I live on the North anyway, right? <laughs> Like, what a ridiculous show. It's very fun, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode like I did as well. But that'll be it for today, guys. I hope you have a great day, week, month, and year. And actually, I, I, I'm i kind of curious what that item is, actually. Because to my knowledge, we haven't seen it yet in the show. It kind of feels like it's out of nowhere. But I'm sure it will become more relevant in the future. So I'm looking forward to finding out about that, actually. But again, guys, until next time, hope you have a great day, week, month, and year. And until then, deuces and have a blessed day. I'll see you guys next time.